welcome. Today's presentation on preventing the spread of multi-drug resistant organisms is brought to you by the Idaho Healthcare Associated Infections Program. This presentation is expected to last about nine minutes. Today we will discuss preventing the spread of multi-drug resistant organisms. At the conclusion of the lesson, you will be able to define multi-drug resistant organisms, know common infections, understand colonization, and identify ways to prevent the spread of infection. Multi-drug resistant organisms, commonly abbreviated as MDROs, are organisms or germs that are difficult to treat as they are resistant to multiple drugs or antibiotics. This means many antibiotics are not effective against them and won't work to kill these germs. MDRO transmission is common in residential care settings and can contribute to resident illness, increased healthcare costs, and death. Your residents are at an increased risk for becoming seriously ill due to their age as well as the likelihood of them, being on a ventilator, having indwelling devices such as catheters, taking long courses of certain antibiotics, having had recent surgery, and having weakened immune systems. MDROs can cause infections such as urinary tract infections, pneumonia, bloodstream infections, and wound infections. Infections caused by MDROs occur all across the United States and the world, but where do these organisms like to hang out on your body? MDROs can be found in many different spots both inside and on the body. Different MDROs colonize different body sites. Some prefer the intestinal tract and stomach, where others tend to grow on skin sites such as the armpits, groin, hands, and toes. When it comes to MDROs, it is important to know that residents can have an MDRO in or on their body and not have symptoms. This is called colonization. You should also know residents in long-term care are at an increased risk of becoming colonized and developing an MDRO infection. Colonization may persist for long periods of time before an infection develops. Colonized individuals, well without symptoms, can still spread MDROs to others. For this reason, focusing only on residents with active infections can lead to the spread of MDROs by those who are colonized. The iceberg graphically represents colonization versus infection. The residents with active infections are just the tip of the iceberg of all residents infected or colonized. Proper cleaning and disinfection of the environment is essential to control the spread of MDROs. It is important that you use EPA registered disinfectants specific to the MDRO of concern to determine if your disinfectant is appropriate or to find the list of approved disinfectants, you can visit the EPA registered disinfectants webpage. Here you can find the searchable list of products registered against common pathogens such as C. auris as shown in the image to the right. Remember, it is important to follow the directions for use when using disinfectants. It is especially critical that you follow the contact time for each product. This means leaving the product wet on the surface for the recommended time to kill that specific germ. For more information, check out our cleaning and disinfection training. It is important that you protect yourself from the spread of MDROs as well as protect your residents. You can do this by using the correct personal protective equipment and following the appropriate precautions. When dealing with MDROs, there are three types of precautions you will use, standard precautions, enhanced barrier precautions, and contact precautions. We will discuss these more on the next slides. Standard precautions are a group of infection prevention practices that apply to the care of all residents, regardless of suspected or confirmed infection or colonization. They are based on the principle that all blood, body fluids, secretions, and excretions, except sweat, may contain infectious germs. The use of personal protective equipment, or PPE, is based on staff interaction with residents and the potential for exposure to blood, body fluids, or germs. For example, gloves are worn when contact with blood, body fluids, mucous membranes, non-intact skin, or potentially contaminated surfaces or equipment are anticipated. Contact precautions are a group of infection prevention practices implemented for residents with an active MDRO infection. Contact precautions are used when standard precautions alone are not enough and are intended to prevent infections from spreading by direct or indirect contact 
with the resident or the resident's environment. Contact precautions require the use of gowns and gloves on every entry into a resident's room. The resident is given dedicated equipment like their own stethoscope and blood pressure cuff and is placed into a private room. If a private room is not available, infected residents may be grouped together. Residents on contact precautions should be restricted to their rooms except for medical care and should be restricted from participation in group activities. Because contact precautions require room restriction, they are generally intended to be time limited and should always include a plan for discontinuation. Hand hygiene is a critical part of controlling the spread of MDROs. Hand hygiene includes the use of alcohol-based hand sanitizer or washing with soap and water. Why does it matter? Proper hand hygiene can prevent you from getting an infection and from spreading infections to your residents. Even if you are wearing proper PPE and gloves, your hands can be contaminated during removal or through rips and tears. Therefore, it is important that you perform hand hygiene before and after resident interactions. If your hands are visibly dirty or if you have been assisting a resident who has a vomiting or diarrheal illness, it is critical you wash your hands with soap and water. Otherwise, sanitizer is the preferred method of hand hygiene in residential care settings. To wrap up our lesson on preventing the spread of MDROs in residential care, let's review a few key takeaways. Remember that your residents are at an increased risk for multidrug resistant organisms due to their age and possible medical conditions. Residents may have an active infection with symptoms or be colonized with no symptoms. Therefore, it is important to always use good infection control practices to prevent the spread. This includes proper cleaning and disinfection, hand hygiene, and the use of correct PPE and appropriate precautions. Thank you for watching this presentation. If you have any questions or requests for additional trainings, please contact the Idaho Healthcare Associated Infections Program using the information on the slide.